personalities of the maritime training world. He spearheaded the Tolani Maritime Institute as its founder principal for many years. He is a graduate of the World Maritime University and also lectured there. He did his MS from Bits Pilani and later on his PhD. He is the chairman of the Research and Training Program Committee of INSA and is also the chairman of the Narottam Moraji Institute of Shipping. Very good to see you, sir. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Each of our panelists today had very well-known mm -hmm. companies and organizations. Captain C.L. Dube is an extra master and principal of MMTI Mumbai. Captain Dubey has authored many nautical textbooks. He has been involved as external examiner for masters and mates. He is also an examiner for the Mumbai University. We'd like to know more about that son in the time to come. Captain Deepak Korea started his career with Larsen and Tubro Shipping. He has worked with many ship management companies and is presently the COO of Elegant Marine Services. Captain Subroto Khan, an aluminus of the 1983-85 TS Rajendra batch, and is currently the campus director of TS Chanakya, the IMU Navi Mumbai campus. He sailed with Great Eastern Shipping and also served for seven years as management representative in the Great Eastern Maritime Institute in Donavla. <laughs> Ms. Sonali Banerjee is a pass out from BMT. She is the first Indian Lady Marine Engineering Officer and has served the leading ship management companies. She's presently a senior surveyor with IRS. She's a member of VISTA and also the co-founder of the Federation of Global Maritime Community. We'd like to hear more about this later on. Mr. Subrat Mukherjee passed out from BMT in 1983 and had sailed throughout with SCI. He has also worked with IRS as a surveyor. He is presently the manning director for Dockendale shipping in Mumbai. Mr. Amar Singh Thakur, as all of you know, is the General Secretary of the Maritime Union of India and is based out of Mumbai and is extremely proactive in providing assistance to the Indian Marine officers. Mr. Abdul Ghani Sarang needs no introduction whatsoever. He is extremely well known in the maritime world and is a very gifted orator, as many of you know. He is the General Secretary of the National Union of Seafarers of India, and under his leadership, NUSI has achieved many milestones. Our moderator, Captain M.C. Yadav, is the epitome of knowledge and a man of great integrity. He has been at the forefront of training for FOSMA for many years and is considered the go-to person for guidance and mentoring. We also have Captain Halbe, who is the CEO of MASA and has very kindly consented to give the vote of thanks. Thank you, sir, and welcome. Today, the topic of discussion is maritime training in all its forms. What is lacking and what are the challenges facing the sailing staff when it comes to training and competency? Are we making our seafarers paper tigers or are we equipping them to deal authoritatively when faced with challenges, challenging situations at sea? The webinar founding theme of connecting sea to shore, therefore, is of great relevance. How good is the shore staff when it comes to identifying training needs for the sailing staff? Do they work as a team? Does the shore staff address the concerns raised by the sailing staff in a timely and an effective manner? Are the ship operators satisfied by the training available to the seafarers? Do the seafarers feel confident of the training they have received? Is this scope for more training? Are senior officers on board taking time out to share their valuable experiences with the junior staff? These are some of the questions we will seek to discuss in today's webinar. To this extent, we will hear from the sailing staff and then our learned moderator will seek the views of our esteemed panelists. To keep it more effective, we will have two speakers and then we will have our moderator take over and seek the panelists' views. So there will be uh, three interactions with the panelists. As mentioned earlier, Maritime Destination will prepare a paper covering the discussions on the webinars and share this paper with the industry through various organizations and associations. To set the ball rolling, I now invite 
failing bosun, Mr. Philip George, to present his views. Mr. George, you can unmute yourself and also your video so we can see and hear you at the same time. Please go ahead. Thank you so much. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Uh, nice to see you all. A uh, couple of uh, captain I am very familiar with. Uh, nice to see you all. Uh, regarding this uh, training and uh, other things, now I feel uh, new training uh, things are changed. What I am trying to say is uh, people before used to train properly with all kind of uh, uh, what I am trying to say is uh, some special training given by say companies like Anglo East uh, they are once the GP training is done they have given some specialization in the welding, cutting, those kind of things that is really appreciating. Now the it is just changed. Uh, I think uh, people may not getting adequate uh, training and uh, that impact is on uh, current CFR is that they may not have uh, much interest in uh, training also. Okay, sir, you can uh, say something else. Uh, Mr. George, uh, is that uh, your final presentation, or do you have something more to add to what what you have just said, sir? I will I, I will come on uh, once the meeting is going on. I will come up with uh, something uh, more. Okay. But I just uh, okay. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. George. Uh, I'm sure our moderator has taken note of your comments. Uh, may I now invite uh, Sailing Second Officer Sandeep Kanwa? to please uh, unmute yourself, show us and your video as well, and please take center stage. Mr. Sandeep Kanwar. Good, e Good evening, respected uh, chief guest, our uh, panelists and dear seafarers. Today, I'm really glad to join this webinar. My name is Sandeep Kanwar, sailing in the rank of second officer. First key point that I would like to highlight is that the paperwork needs to be reduced as the technology is advancing day by day and the ships are becoming modern, most of the paperwork can be digitalized or reduced, thereby reducing cumbersome file loads and uh, time spent in its upkeep. Secondly, timely relief and uh, sign off. Only if uh, time, timely relief could be could uh, become more happening, a seafarer would give us 100% to any task on board. The biggest emotional challenge which every seafarer have to face is that they live apart from their friends, loved ones, and family. Nostalgia is a constant fear which overpowers the sailor most of the time. Thirdly, trainings at shore. Uh, like as we know, during COVID times, courses uh, became online. Although they, uh, they are more convenient, flexible, and affordable, but they have been more, uh, but they have their own cons too, like it becomes hard to learn from other participants with the uh, in-person courses. There is much more sharing of experiences from frustrations and problems and through to solutions from the other participants. We can uh, tap into the collective uh, experience of the group rather than just the uh, course presenter. These uh, peer interactions are valuable learning experiences and can make the course a lot more enjoyable. Often we realize that uh, many other uh, many others are facing the same doubts as we are uh, uh, as we are facing, and as a group solving them is a lot more fun and productive. This experience is uh, hard to replicate in an uh, online course. And lastly, uh, I would like to mention is the fatigue uh, and burnout. I mean, uh, the combination of all these factors leads uh, many seafarers to quit their jobs at sea due to physical fatigue and mental burnout. Uh, there are minimum uh, number of rest hours and uh, maximum number of work hours that maritime workers are entitled to. But these standards are often overlooked or ignored, speeding up the process of wearing out even the most dedicated crew members. And uh, lastly, sir, uh, I would like to thank for letting me speak on the seafarers' behalf. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Kanwar. Uh, Captain Yadav, sir, all yours now. Yeah, thank you, Captain Mani. Uh, <clears throat> let's take the first question from our bosun, Mr. Philip Jos. And uh, 
I'd like to address this question to uh, Suprat Mukherjee, wherein it has been pointed out that uh, in these days, uh, uh, companies are not taking sufficient interest in adding uh, new skills and providing value-added training, such as welding, cutting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, as it used to be earlier, in particular, one company he named. So, would you like to have uh, any comment, please? Yeah, thanks, uh, Phillips, to join at short notice, first of all. And let me tell you, this question answer is <laughs> not a uh, planned one to the audience. So, it happens to be that he is working for my company only, right, Philip? Probably that's why he pointed out. <laughs> 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 so I hope it doesn't become boring for others. But yes, I do agree that for the last couple of years, I will have to blame because I, I really have to blame the corona effect, which has taken uh, a big toll on the training and uh, the budgets were not even used one third of what we had budgeted. And obviously the planned uh, uh, schedule that uh, planned the training was nowhere in uh, sight, not possible. But Phillips will confirm to it that Dockendale puts in a lot of uh, effort. I don't want to be sounding company propaganda here, but overall, uh, a lot of effort uh, as far as the training goes, and that is for both the ranks, that is for the ratings as well as for the officers. Details uh, maybe Philip is aware about and uh, for those who don't know, we essentially uh, uh, take uh, some ranks uh, and we have a training institute in collaboration, not our own training institute, but yes, we do it in collaboration at Kolkata. Extensive training even after passing out from college, that is, I'm talking about uh, the TMEs and also the fitters and all these people who are the critical hands-on people with the job who required to use the equipments and finish the jobs. These people are taken and given free of course training at our Kolkata uh, associates. And since uh, during the pandemic time, all that has gone for a toss. We are slowly, slowly trying to come back on our track. Over. Uh, extremely sorry, sir. I just uh, want to disturb. Uh, I incidentally said some company's name, but exactly was what I intend is if uh, the people with uh, versatile capacity on uh, different uh, uh, different sections, they are, they can able to produce a lot of good things on board. That's what uh, I just intend to say. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you for thank, choosing thank me. Uh, thank you for choosing me. Yeah, thank, oh, you. <clears throat> thank you. We noted your point. Uh, and uh, uh, well, uh, Subrat, while you are there, can you just take on the one more question here from the uh, second officer, Mr. Sandeep Kanwar. Paperwork needs to be reduced and time spent in uh, its upkeep and uh, so can you just take that on as well, please? Yeah, Sandeep <clears throat> is an extra articulate speaker and very well uh, spoken, Sandeep. I really want to congratulate you at your age and at your rank. Perhaps I would have not been able to open my mouth properly. But uh, fantastic, the way you expressed in you know very few words and very correct uh, requirements which ought to be considered. I fully agree with your point made that with digitalization, the workload can be made less. It is now a matter of clicking, only not ticking. But yes, even clicking also can be reduced further. And uh, I fully endorse your uh, viewpoints and the company's specific requirements. We are uh, noting it, and I will definitely be giving this suggestion to my operation teams and my technical teams how to how to get it down how to get how to bring it down it is really frustrating for officers and engineers on board to complete all their you know duties and at end of it you know again sit back doing paperwork over extra few hours 
and i fully endorse whatever you said sandeep over thank you thank you subrat now we'll come back to this paperwork part of it once again because this has been a perpetual issue which has been raised almost in every forum <laughs> yeah and um, i would be very happy if you know we can come out with some sort of uh, practical uh, you know ways of demonstrating say maybe even two three points also uh, we can be somewhere we can make a start that which checklist can go and you are an expert captain mahesh and perhaps your guidance can come very handy in to get out of it thank you all right thanks a lot i think we all will need to work together on this front uh, along with everybody else uh, let me invite uh, captain deepak korea for uh, two of the real tough questions actually if i can use the term uh yes uh, captain deepak korea thank you so much uh, uh, two questions to you uh, as you pointed out timely relief is somehow taken a back seat particularly during the covid period sometimes yes it is very much understandable sometimes may or may not okay uh, the second part that comes along with that and also probably associated with that is the he said about uh, physical fatigue and uh, mental burnout so can you please deal with these two issues yes sir sure thanks captain yadav and uh... uh sandeep like uh, subrat mentioned i uh, do appreciate very valid points you brought uh, forward uh before i take this question i'll just touch upon what um, uh, the earlier question of paperwork now i have a, uh, okay. a take on that is that uh, just saying that there's a lot of paperwork is isn't enough and i've seen that even in the masters reviews there's always a fact that and even i am i'm 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 sort of you know responsible for writing reduce paperwork what we need is to identify what needs to be reduced and each company and the sailors know best what needs to be reduced so i think if we are more specific and we go about doing it in a more uh, sort of a you know a, a way in which planned way there is no reason why you cannot and also for those companies who don't have as much paperwork they should think twice before really introducing any checklist or any procedure or anything which just makes us if there is life more difficult than what it is you know so there is need to be careful review before we introduce anything into a uh, cfr whether it is a reporting loan reporting whatever be that said now talking about the timely relief covid aside even otherwise i think if there is a strong commitment from the very top that we take it upon ourselves that this is the kpi this is what will be our kind of uh, delayed relief percentage and we will stick by it i don't see any reason why why we can't you know i sort of manage uh, i i remember at least uh, you know in one company i was with that we and i am responsible also for taking it for granted you know, that okay yaar hum paise bach jayenge let me let me do it in you know in in the far east and not in brazil and and stuff like that till till we realized that it became a became a problem upon ourselves and then when 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 the boss brought in the kpi we suddenly realized that this whole uh, sort of focus on primary relief you know change and we we we, we could we could achieve what what as if there is really wanted us and i think it's very important for people like me and many others in our position to drive this to the organization uh, that uh, just as all of us here in the office also uh, sort of look forward to going home on time uh, the, the the kind of uh, you know uh, uh, practice of sitting till late is now not there anymore maybe sometimes we do take work home but that aside going home being Uh, with your families is a very very important aspect always has been and i think uh, uh, it is it is up to us as leaders to drive this down so okay uh, and i'll take the third point here uh, that's that was pointed out by second officer mr sandeep kanwar dealing with uh, training ashore uh, pointing out that uh, yes though the online training programs were conducted during this period but they were not as effective as they should have been or uh, particularly as compared to the physical uh, classes uh, you know which are held for uh, certificate of competency examinations or the modular courses captain cl dubey you are owning a training institute i think your frank comments on this uh yeah uh, good evening uh, thanks uh, 
captain uh, uh, mc yadav and mr gagan pande for giving this opportunity to speak on it uh, uh, in reaction to the question raised by mr sandeep uh, i fully agree with his views uh, this is same as my views uh, we found that uh, many candidates did not come to do competency courses in our institute uh because they were not uh, liking this uh, online learning but of course this was the only possible way during the pandemic time the training had to continue and therefore this was a good opportunity provided by the dg shipping uh, so that people can uh, carry on the training but this is absolutely true that many candidates postponed their uh, classes uh, and their courses they went on for sailing and they waited for uh, the offline classes so that they can join then and continue their training and activities uh, you see it was very very obvious the eye contact was not there the interaction between faculty and students were not that way which used to be earlier in physical classes and now it is even between student to student interaction was not there subjects like uh, chart work and all you know where the practical uh, you know uh, things are required the faculty has to go to each table and uh, ask the difficulties and solve their uh, problems on chart work and show them how it is to be done these things were not there and candidates were not learning outside that not even uh, 60 70% so this was uh, you know I I I felt it, and I knew because I went to the classes of second mates, mates, and masters. I I asked them, and they said this is a view of ours. So I fully agree with you. Okay, since the question was actually, uh, I assume it was related to the post C training for the competency courses. Uh, uh, Captain Subrato Khan, will you have any view on that while being in charge of a? Pre-seed training institute. How bad that was when it comes to the pre-seed training. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, good evening, maritime destination, and thank you for having me over. <clears throat> uh, online training for pre-seed has been quite challenging because the maturity level of the people and pre-seed level is far less compared to post-seed second officer level. So there were a lot of people who were taking classes while they were in bed. There were some people who were in gymnasium. while the classes were going on which was very shocking to understand so effectiveness depends on the person who has been trained because a lot of people in online education as i uh, agree with uh, convey that it was difficult for the students also to adapt to this new method of training all of a sudden and even for the faculty also it was little difficult to adjust to online mode of education in the beginning towards the later part things got streamlined but as uh, i think most of us agree out here that uh, contact classes or offline classes is there to stay with little bit of blended with online learning but uh, thankfully it is over today and we are back the campuses are up and about and we have our campuses full of cadets full strength up and that makes it that training has gone back to where it was to answer the question in one line on uh, online training is rather difficult and more difficult for pc level because of their levels of concentration and at home there is no control on what they are exactly doing so i totally agree and thankfully we are back to uh, offline which is a good news for all of us so that is all from my side thank you and uh, uh before i uh, add my two lines uh, at the end i think before that i'll go to my ms sonali banerji on the question of uh, paperwork on board to be reduced by digitalizing as a classification society as an independent organization recognized organization how can we contribute towards this reduction of paperwork on ships or between uh, and thank you so much sir and uh, thank you the mr gagan pandey for giving me <clears> this <throat> wonderful opportunity to present my views 
as uh, i have been with classification society it's almost <clears throat> eight years and uh, currently we can all see that uh, you know the digitalization and decarbonization are primarily the two things that are going to take the shipping industry by storm and we are already going through that perhaps things which would have come in the next five to ten years have been accelerated during the corona period especially things like uh, you know remotely conduct of surveys then uh, remote conduct of classes this zoom meetings online classes everything regarding the paperwork part digitalization definitely is the future to be but uh, in our experience what i have seen that generally say an additional form or a checklist that is generated it is generally as the outcome of some incident that may have happened due to some human error or some finding during an audit where in some process gap must have been identified so the checklist is primarily the uh, a form or a checklist is primarily to take care of that and uh, generally we see that during the audits as uh, an outcome of uh, closure of some nc we see another form being generated so that the same is not you know accounted for again so somehow we need to take care of uh, like when we undertake uh, i mean present ourselves as auditors it's very important that we understand that anything and everything that comes across the easiest thing is to you know cover it up in a checklist and put it in a form so we need to find alternate means though the paper itself can be reduced by using digital forms and all but the reduction in the forms we really as an industry need to look at that how maybe how we can you know maybe club and uh, make them more comprehensive to be able to reduce the paper that will be all from my side yeah, thank you and uh, just two comments from my side though i should refrain uh, from passing comments but uh, uh, just two of these items one was regarding the value added training which has suffered a lot during last uh, two and a half years or so uh, various training programs being conducted by the associations by the unions by the companies they all had to take a back seat because it was just not uh, possible to uh, conduct those uh, value added training courses particularly most of them were more uh, you know skill oriented uh, being conducted by these entities and uh, of course we'll try and make up for that uh, as the things open up and hopefully nothing no fourth or fifth or something like that coming uh other thing was about this uh, online training uh, yes but uh, let us also accept the fact did we have an alternate we could not do the with uh, you know uh, competency courses or modular courses or simulator courses in physical mode it was just not possible everything was locked down what was the alternate so when there is no other alternative available we tried to do our best to that extent that we could do if it was 60% successful 70% successful so be it rather than being 0% and with that i think uh, uh may i invite mr abdul ghani sarang and after that we go back to captain mani mr sarang will you have any comment on, on at least these two things last two things which i mentioned she first <clears throat> of all uh, th uh thank you uh, i'm it's a pleasure to be here uh mai mujhe ye kehna hai ki pandemic to abhi aaya but the things which we are discussing has been there before pandemic also the paper work the training Uh, training sh which should be imparted you know as the boson mentioned some companies do the training some companies want finished products only so we cannot yes pandemic had its own you know issue due to the pandemic but the things which we are discussed in the last half an hour has been there before pandemic also so it is more of a mindset change and the, you know loosening of the you know uh, making an investment in the seafarer as far as training is concerned no that is very important now as the boson mentioned and and we find it and we have and i am very open and very categorically i mentioned the budgets allocated allocated by the companies there is a vast difference between the budgets allocated for the training for the officers and the ratings so isme zara mindset change bhi zarur hona chahiye that it has to be that the रेटिंग्स को कहेंगे कि भाई आप आपका ट्रेडिंग करो यू आर ऑन योर ओन आप आपका कर के आओ सो देर हैज टू बी अ गुड फेयर अमाउंट ऑफ सपोर्ट फ्रॉम द कंपनीज आल्सो फॉर ऑल रैंक्स 
पर्टिकुलरली फॉर द रेटिंग अक्सर होता है कि रेटिंग के लिए नहीं होती सो दैट वॉज वन पॉइंट एंड द पेपर वर्क का जो बात है अगेन देर हैज बीन यू नो वी आर नॉट डिस्कसिंग इट फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम एज कैप्टन यादव ऑल्सो मैंशन दिस हैज बीन यू नो पेरिनल इश्यू अबाउट मोर पेपर वर्क वी नीड टू रिड्यूस इड there had been some attempts which has been made early i think the dg also came out with some guidelines you know the some meeting but we lack a consistency on that part so if we can consistently address that issue of reduction of paperwork and set set, set uh, you know so the this is a uh, uh, not just a, a template not just for the I- india but you know it can be emulated by other com- countries also you know but as a template we can put in a renewed effort on the reduction of paper but it should be done with consistency i would like to give my take on this two point as of now thank you so much fine noted i think uh, let's go back to captain mani and uh, invite the other participants please thank you captain yadav thank you everyone uh, before i invite the next speaker i would like to mention that we are so grateful for the audience to be present here and uh, no seminar or webinar uh, can fulfill its uh, objective if we don't have the audience to spread the word around or what has been discussed we have allocated some time for the audience to interact uh, also with us uh, that will be a little mm-hmm. later on and if you have any questions or if you have any comments please reserve it till the end and uh, we will surely get back to you if it is a burning question that needs to be addressed with the point raised just put it on the chat we have a lot of uh, agenda to follow and uh, we will accommodate there is no point the audience being here if they can't interact so we really appreciate that and uh, we will be giving you enough time for that uh, now may i invite uh, second engineer aprojita ray Aprojita are you here? I don't see her on the on the participant list. So we'll move on to uh, our chief officer Mr Manu Singh. Uh Mr Manu Singh can you please uh, come on stage now? Thank you. Very good evening to one and all sir. It's uh, it's a pleasure to be among such high personalities. and uh, i won't be i won't be taking much of a long time but i would i would like to uh, put emphasis on few of the things which we as a sea players once we are coming back like we have to face once we are going for any upgradation uh manu can you do something yeah. with your audio we are not very uh, audible can you be closer to the mic thank you is it is it audible now sir Yeah, Am better. Am I audible better. now? Yeah, better. Yeah, Go I'm ahead. so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Sorry for that, sir. Uh, the things which I would like to I would like to focus on uh, during this pandemic, like I was listening right uh, before also, we all talked about the timely crew changes and everything, all the efforts that were made by the company. But I would also like to put a little bit more emphasis that we should also talk about the mental health of the seafarers that they. So they were, they are, or they will be due to the pandemic effect that has happened. That is the first thing that I wanted to discuss. And the second thing is that, uh, uh, in a particular area, I would just uh, say that in Delhi, when a candidate is going for an oral or an examination, due to the pandemic, uh, a lot of times it has happened that the duration. when it, he is being informed that the examination is going to be conducted especially for the orals is just one day prior to the date of the oral there are a lot lot of candidates who has missed their orals and they have been marked absent for the same uh, very same reason and uh, the third thing which i wanted to uh, i wanted to just share is uh, the there have been lot of lot of improvements from our uh, from our industry side from the mmd from the dgs and one of the very good example is the e governance there have been lot of changes in the e governance lot of things have been up, uh, have been introduced like the candidate has to fill up their details 
as well as the companies are now obliged to fill up with uh, their the C times and everything. But still, not in lot of places and in lot of forms, the candidates are asked to present the C time C time letter or the C service letter from the company, which, in my opinion, can be amended a bit. because there are a lot of candidates who have been who have sailed for a long time and due to any reasons they did not have the c time letter or the company for which they were working are now already closed or are not in a condition to provide the c time letter i think this can be a very helpful step because all these things are already mentioned in the e governance and in the master checker and any organization which is asking for the same can be can take all these details which are very much verified by the dgs and the process can be initiated a bit more faster and i would be very i am very grateful for the time allocated to me and i would like to uh, i would like to pass on the mic to you again sir and i would again say thank you very much for the all Yes, thank you, Mr. Manu Singh, uh, <clears throat> for the, all the very relevant points raised. Unfortunately, the two of the items that you pointed out, that the communication to the candidates, particularly in Delhi, before the oral examination, is uh, not well in time so that you can prepare and be ready for it. And uh, due to that, many candidates might have been absent or might have missed out the opportunity to appear for. the oral examination in that particular month <clears throat> second thing you raised about the c time certificate uh, that uh, in a, in spite of having everything e governance and uh, you know e migrate and form 1 and everything else still they are insisting on the c time certificate uh, at the mmds when the candidates go for uh, uh, <clears throat> assessment for eligibility to appear for a particular examination i'd like to throw this to somebody who would like to answer this question because we don't have any person on the panel from the administration from mmd or dg that i can see here anybody please captain yadav can i can yeah, i please. answer the second part that he raised is detected yeah please go ahead uh, Mr. Manu Singh, thank you very much for raising this issue. Uh, though I am neither the panelist nor the organizer, but I am being brave enough to say something about this. Um, uh, Captain Yadav and myself, uh, both of us uh, work for uh, maritime associations uh, who represent a number of companies. And one of the things we have taken up with the administration is exactly the point about sea time that you mentioned. We have taken up that since. Uh, the e-governance system has been set up and is working, so it should now work like a digi locker, okay? Where the where your documents are all uploaded and nobody should be able to ask you for the documents because they are already there. So that is one of the suggestions we have given. Another suggestion we have given is that, for example, a master needs to revalidate his certificate. He needs only twelve months sea time in the last five years to revalidate. I am talking about a master certificate. So. if he produces c time certificates for 12 months then the matter should rest there don't ask him for all the c service that he has had in 5 years because it is irrelevant so we have yeah. taken this up but just as you know you have raised this we have also raised this there are certain mindsets unfortunately which we need to uh, you know there are certain challenges on the other side as well and when i'm saying other side i'm just saying the administration they are not other in any sense i can assure you that especially in the pandemic and the thereafter the cooperation which we have seen with the administration i have never seen in the past 20 years that i have been assured and i don't know whether captain yadav will agree with my statement that it is something abnormal the cooperation that we saw whatever we asked they would call for a meeting they would discuss the issue with you i am not saying we got everything but they would hear us out so uh, i think we are on that road but your point is absolutely valid if i need 12 months sea time why do you want 36 months certificates you know it makes sense to me and we have taken that up okay i hope i have 
I have not answered, but I have explained. I hope. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> regarding the other question that the candidates informed about the oral examination, <clears throat> just maybe only one day in advance, which uh, catches them very unprepared. Uh, let me see. If, uh, can I request Captain Sham Jaram to please respond to this? He has been an external examiner for uh, uh, maybe 20 years or more. Captain Jaram, are you there? Uh, I don't I don't know whether Mahesh, you can hear me, but I can't seem to get my camera on. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Okay. Please go ahead. Okay, okay. okay. We as external examiners <laughs> are given uh, the indication from uh, MMP uh, well in advance, actually about uh, at least about two weeks before the start of the orals, and we all give our dates to them. And I understand at that particular time, all the candidates, whether it's masters or mates or second mates, they are also are applying for the examination and they also get their dates. So I'm surprised that it is only given one day before. That should uh, that definitely is not correct. But I thought that MMD was... Uh, informing all the candidates well in advance about their dates. This is what I was told uh, by the MMD officers. You know? So uh, I don't know, Manu, uh, if you have found it that it has only been informed one day before, it is definitely not correct as far as I'm concerned. You should be given enough chance, like the external examiners are informed at least two weeks before the examination. All new candidates also should be informed. So I guess we may have to take it up, the associations, we have to take it up with the administration. Thank you, Mahesh. Yeah. Thank you, Captain Jaram, at uh, you know, no notice to have responded to the question. Mr. Manu Singh, would you like to uh, comment on that? No, sir. I, 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 I think... Uh, no, what you need I to only do is to establish what, what you said, that that is correct, that the people are not given sufficient uh, notice and they are informed only one day in advance. That's what you are doing. Yes, exactly. This is this is not with respect to the preparedness, but sometimes there are a lot of things which the candidate has, because uh, we all have been at sea. What happens is that there are a lot of things which we have already lined up and we are already prepared that yes, yes I have if I have booked my seat, this is the month which in which I am going to get my dates for oral. Yeah. But just waiting because it has happened and it has a first hand information from someone who's who got the information just one day and due to some reason he was not able to check the email and uh, was missed it out and marked absent. And then it, since it is marked absent, the candidate will have to appear after two months. That's the standard practice, which is... Which yes. is good. But I do completely agree with all the panelists that we, those, who have, uh, those who have answered. I also would like to just get back to the, the, the last uh, question or the last uh, suggestion that I had regarding the mental health of the seafarers during the pandemics. We all please talked about, we all join. talked about the key changes. So please join. Please join. So please join. I'll, I'll inform Captain Manny. Yes, sir. Yeah, Mr. Manu Singh, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Talked about the difficulties that as as a seafarer we faced, along with the difficulties that the shipping companies faced for repatriation of the crew. But at the same time, I think we should also talk about the mental health and the mental uh, stresses that the seafarers had once they were stuck on board. And due to uh, that, the effects that they, it, it had on the on their mind. Okay, now let me see whom can I invite uh, to respond to this question. Mr. Uh, Amar Singh Thakur, Maritime Union of India, are you here? Captain Mahesh, uh, just I would like one second of time on sure. behalf of MMD okay. to highlight their woes of uh, you know uh, issues. Uh, I, I am not connected with MMD or DG anyway, but I do understand this issue of notification of one day 
before came into the practice because of existing system which was there already where we were advanced information of at least a week before we came to know that uh, when and which uh, surveyor is going to do the uh, survey or uh, ask the oral questions or there is a whole lot of lobbying starts uh, once this is published that is what i understand and this was the main reason of uh, informing the candidates uh, 24 hours before just to cut down the stress on the surveyor and there are hardly two or three surveyors you know so even if they don't put the surveyor's name and if that uh, date is given then all high profile calls you imagine from delhi a person who is sitting in delhi and doing this uh, you know so called final uh, viva and getting calls from you know i am calling from home minister's office i am calling from chief minister's office i am calling from lg's office it makes a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, different uh, sort of scenario for the person who is going to take that exam and that was the main reason of cutting it out and not informing the person that who is going to be your examiner and not well in advance over no the question here was not about not informing the name of the examiner or external examiner so the item that has been pointed out is the person has been only informed that your orals will be tomorrow that's what i said that there are only three examiners in delhi and 24 hours before you start calling if you know you will definitely be hampered but if you know one week in before all the three examiners can be called at random and they can be harassed they can be influenced they can be you know made uh, to uh, you know succumb to you know i am i am this i am that i am i mean come back to enforcement directorate ed this that it starts it happens and i know people who are sitting there and taking this exams captain poswal is my next door neighbor in mumbai over okay okay so uh, mr manu singh do you get the answer it is because of the malpractice is associated with Mm-hmm. Things so as to uh, because if the candidates inform the dates, forget about the names of the internal or external examiner. So even if the date is informed, in that case, uh, or, you know, all kind of lobbying and things like that is uh, starting. And then it seems to be uh, what it appears because I have not seen anybody else responding to it. So it seems to be a more of a Delhi specific problem than anything else. of course mahesh if i can just add yeah. uh, the external examiners are of course told not to divulge the dates of their Correct. examination Correct. and we all keep confidential so yeah. that no one knows who's going to be the examiner on which day you know so that is uh, confidentiality which is maintained yeah no no that's fine see we are only talking about the candidate to know which date he is being called for examination that's all nothing really more than that we don't want to know the name of the internal examiner or external examiner uh, or any other information just that he should know about the date of examination at least uh, whenever the schedule is published that's all nothing more than that so if for some specific reasons if it is being followed this is kind of practice is being followed in delhi due to uh, the reasons explained by mr subrat mukherji then i don't really know what to do about it because in trying to I have a question uh, yeah believe me captain yadav they start with a very professional way half of them are fakes and they start jai hind sir main is waqt income tax directorate ke office mein baitha hu aap se baat karna chahta hu 2 minute aap mahoday samay denge in pure hindi language which is you know coming out straight from the governmental officers uh, you know mouth they have practiced it i don't know whether they are con they are not con and they make you believe they are calling sitting you know next to the income tax officer or the ib director or something like that and they call all the three guys uh-huh. or and then they start harassing you know this is this this is that anyway over uh, one one quick question captain yadav yeah. and captain jairam <clears throat> the on uh, the orals have started online yeah okay, they started so h- how does it matter even if you are told a day earlier eh? because you don't know the surveyor because i have witnessed myself surveyors conducting from mumbai candidate is sitting in jammu i have seen that when i visited so uh, does it really matter uh, no some changes which have been made very recently i would say just about 2 uh, months ago 
earlier it was the internal and external examiner of the mmd where the candidate had booked the book for the orals now last two months or so and there must be some uh, very valid reasons for having done that uh, last two months or so the internal examiner as well as the external examiners they are not from that city where the person has booked for the orals yeah, yeah. so the uh, you know uh, what is the place uh, kanla candidates are being examined by an internal examiner of uh, at port blair and external examiner may be from mumbai or chennai and similarly the delhi candidates are being examined by mumbai or cochin fellows uh, internal and external so probably that chains might have come about uh, maybe due to these kind of reasons because as uh, mr subrat mukherjee pointed out that since there are only three persons in delhi so then they you know once the date is known then they get after those people to say that whatever influence that they sure. i mean that's how that's how income tax has changed and uh, now you don't know where your assessment is all faceless yeah your assessment can happen from guwahati yeah. so last two months i know that uh, the examination is being conducted internal and external uh, online and they are not from that particular uh, uh, mm i mean that particular city where that mmd the candidate has booked for the orals all right i think uh, 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 i can't see mr amar singh thakur anywhere uh, anybody else would like to respond to this uh, the third question which was raised by mr uh, manu singh regarding the mental health issues can i make a point on that yes please okay <clears throat> as far as the mental health is concerned it is very very important no doubt about it and individually companies they have their own programs for their seafarers many companies have started the program and you know they have gained from the experience of other companies also and as nusi we have had our nusi sahara for the last 7 years which was inaugurated by the by, by dr malini shankar herself and our experience and and it came in very very handy it came in very very uh, you know uh, used during the pandemic time the last two and a half year not just with the seafarers but also their fans so attempts have been made there are more awareness about mental health on a, and companies as i mentioned they have their own many companies have their own specific program for the seafarers but more needs to be done definitely more needs to be done and these are all these awareness programs are done by experts who are, who are experts in their own field in counseling and welfare one point i would want to stress here that company should also have programs of well being not just mental health because when you say mental health it gives a bit of a you know negative connotation ke by stress hai fatigue hai ye hai why should it come at the level of that stress and fatigue if companies have their own well being programs and a very and take it more positively definitely instances of stress and fatigue will definitely reduce the companies are doing it but definitely more needs to be done thank you all right uh, i think uh, uh, let's go back to captain many and uh, i can see miss uh, aprajita re as well on the in the list of participants so uh, captain many over to you yes thank you very much captain yadav this is a, uh, really a very interesting discussion uh, i don't want any comment uh, on this what i'm going to say just now but why don't we just get rid of the orals <laughs> and that that should be uh, a submission that should be made to mmd that uh, orals should be done away with totally i say that because we also conduct examinations and we do not have any orals associated with it and it works very well okay i see uh, aprajita is uh, now here Aprajita is a sailing a second engineer, and she has been part of our seminar earlier as well. Aprajita, welcome, and uh, please take the stage and uh, present us your views. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, I'm sorry I joined a little late. Somehow I was under the impression this was Friday, and so it uh, totally slipped my uh, calendar. I'm very sorry about it. and uh, as uh, i understand that we are talking mainly regarding uh, the pandemic times which uh, has been there since 2020 uh, march i was on board even then when it started i remember and uh, times have been good bad 
really bad and difficult more sh- i should say i have for examples how uh, and what faced and gone through uh, in the times uh, in these times uh, firstly uh, Uh, the SDCW. Uh, I'm also not sure what has already been covered. I'm again extremely sorry about it. So I'll just uh, put forward my points. If I'm, uh, uh, if it's a uh, continue, uh, if it's a replicate, uh, replicating uh, the points which have already been talked about. Please stop me right there. Uh, first of all, I would like to talk about the training part, which uh, lately we have been doing uh, online, uh, including the SDCW and all other kinds of training. so uh, what i have seen on board uh, and i'm also speaking on behalf of uh, uh, my colleagues uh, who have already also been sailing for quite some time the thing is uh, uh, the hands on experience uh, for the training for example let's take uh, psc rb for ex- or uh, firefighting we are doing most of it online which i have also done and the difference the stark uh, uh, contrast between uh, doing it in class and uh, sitting behind a computer or a phone is really uh, very vast and uh, it can never be the same that is what i understand because uh, in these courses which uh, go on range from 2 days 3 days to about a week or so uh, it's not possible that everybody in the class uh, they are on camera or uh, the the mentally they are right there in the class many a times it has happened that the professor or the instructor they have told us that please switch on your cameras especially after lunch and uh, even after the new, uh, candidates who are coming on board the new joiners which i see it it we can see the difference very well in uh, the way they do the things uh, the way we uh, do this weekly checks when we are doing the lsn ffa because uh, previously when we were doing the firefighting the basic and the advanced everything was done uh, in the class and we touched the extinguishers and the firefighting fire uh, man suit and everything so we had a feel of how it is and how it is done reading and just seeing a simulation or a video on the uh, computer it's not exactly the same i think the standard uh, uh, of the whole batch right now uh, the new ones especially who are coming who has never seen uh, stuff like lsa ff they they're seeing it for the first time on board uh, this is a matter of concern i think we should go back to the classrooms as soon as possible because now things are normalizing offices schools and everything even schools for small kids have opened so i think uh, the courses should very well be made uh, like it used to be before uh this is one of them and uh, then i have one more concern which i am facing very much on board these days is uh, when we have a medical problem or uh, we have an injury for example in any of the ports uh, let's take for example uh, any port in china uh, we need to send the crew member to the doctor or uh, for medical assistance or uh, for any other reason he or she has to go out it is not permitted because the first thing the agents come and tell us that um, we can take your crew member um, to the doctor or wherever required but for that we have to do the pcr test for the whole crew which is a big no no because then the commercial impact is huge and uh, uh, even out of 20 if we have about three false positives uh, we do give the pre arrival uh, declaration where we all are uh, none of us have any kind of symptoms nothing uh, whatsoever but still when we are uh, we undergo the pcr test there are times when we there are, there is false positives and then the vessels are held up sometimes for days sometimes for hours or also for weeks which is again a big no no i think it's time that uh, since we see ferrers who are on board we are usually on board we are not going anywhere once we uh, join the ship so uh, to uh, get us through so much of screening just to go see a dentist or a doctor or something like that is uh, this should be revised and i think we should be uh, allowed to go at least see go see uh, a medical uh, specialist when required this is one of them and lastly i would also talk about uh, the mental health which we were talking about we hear so many even i have witnessed a couple of them uh, the last two more than two years we have had no shore leave what i would say is literally no shore leave uh, until now a few of the ports who have started letting us go but uh, that has uh, very adversely affected the 
the working environment of course the minds especially again i would stress on the fact that newcomers who are coming on board for the first time and they're getting stuck for the next 6 months to 8 months and also due to the uh, irregularity in the signing off process uh, people are staying on board for a longer duration and without any kind of um, output or uh, show leave this is getting difficult because uh, it can be totally seen in the output they give in the engine room i am talking about the engine room because uh, that is where uh, i am and um, uh, i think that is also one uh, area we should look into uh, for allowing the seafarers at least now it has been a long time we have been with uh, the the virus for long enough to know how we are supposed to uh, be around it and how to take precautions and at least the ports where uh, the countries where it is in the green list so uh, by imo it seems uh, we should be allowed uh, to go ashore for the uh, shore leave at least these are uh, my points um, my observations okay. Okay. Uh, the last okay uh, thank you thank you ms uh, prajita and uh, uh, i think the points that you addressed uh, all three of them that i noted down i will take on the first one regarding the issue with uh, you know uh, this test and that test and quarantine for so long and all that and request uh, captain deepak korea please from fleet uh, management yeah yeah paparichita when you mention the test you mean all that uh, you need to go through before you join the ship the screening the covid test and the protocols yeah see that is a natural reaction of what the world expects out of you and that's a natural reaction of the company uh, people that country where reject the ring is talking you know so these are the people who are there no this is okay. for you i think uh, captain jaram you will need to mute i'm sorry yeah we are getting some echo uh, uh, captain korea i think yeah. you have to repeat yeah so parichita that is also a result of uh, how sensitive the nation where you're traveling is that is a result of uh, the covid spread uh, in, in the in the in our country so we have to just respond to what uh, you know uh, our uh, the other governments uh, sort of expect uh, out of us but that said uh, i'm pretty sure that uh, we have come a long way and right now uh, uh, I, i i don't see any any uh, sort of a place where we need to really have uh, uh, extensive quarantine here in india or even in the port of joining i think even the rt pcr test is a, it's just that one test you need to which is also an airline requirement and stuff but that we will have to still have till such time that uh, the the other countries expect us to do that but again if there are if you are fully vaccinated many of them are giving concessions india is giving to its uh, citizens so so like i said uh, all all of this is not something companies can drive uh, but your other points which you mentioned especially about show leave is is definitely something that i think which each company can can and should do its part and i think that time has come now where we have to forget about the fact that you know covid is still there we have to sort of with fully vaccinated crew and so much of you know betterment everywhere Uh, we need to uh, uh, sort of force our managements to 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 consider surely for us now i'm fully with you on that uh so i would yeah i totally understand and i agree with you that every country has their own uh, concerns just like we do also and uh, but when we have a serious medical uh, concern on board and that crew member needs to be taken to the uh, hospital for instance most of the time they ask the whole yeah, yeah. Um, vessel crew vessel will to be yeah 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 that when did it. when did you get off your last ship aparijita um i got off 2021 okay so uh, what uh, we see now is uh, most of the countries uh, there is no such uh, kind of requirement the only place i uh, do uh, sort of um, face problems is is china now i we can't solve that you know Right. Uh, we can't solve uh, uh, that, but uh, but by and large, we've not really had uh, any issues uh, with uh, with uh, uh, sort of uh, doctor visits, particularly in most most places. Now there could be an isolated place, country where they may have some strictures, but uh, but otherwise no. Uh, and I'm uh, sure that uh, uh, through the various forums we have, uh, this issue is 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 being addressed by 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 most companies, even our company as well. 
but surely for me is is a challenge even convincing my management here and i have a, a, a board meeting in the coming weeks and this is something which i'm going to impress right. upon uh, you know at least here bravo, thank you sir yes Bye. mr abdul ghani please give, give us the points dipak just just for inform and you must all be aware also as we are speaking the ilo in geneva is discussing the amendments to the mlc and the shore leave issue has been taken up very strongly by both the ship owner side and also the seafarer side particularly shore leave and we are gaining from the experience of the during the pandemic particularly shore leave in in medical instances so both the seafarer side and the ship owner side have been discussing it as we are speaking they have been having it for the last whole week the ilo meeting for the amendments and we are sure that something gaining from the experience of the pandemic something positive will come in as a statute in uh, part a of the of the uh, mlc thank you fantastic fantastic okay coming to your uh, the first part of the question that was dealing with the practical training for the pscrb course or the advanced fire fighting course or the you know the basic level their uh, corresponding basic level courses uh i will uh, go to uh, i think captain dubey later on but let me just try and explain this to you uh, during this period since it was not possible to conduct the practical training courses such as pscrb advanced fire fighting basic fire fighting or pst etc uh, the approach that was taken was to do as much as whatever is feasible whatever can be done we do whatever cannot be done it cannot be since it cannot be done does that does not mean that we uh, see the shipping is not going to come to a stop we got to have the ships moving we got to have the trade moving and therefore we need to have the people revalidating their certificates and therefore what was done was whatever is feasible though it was not stcw compliant let me tell you very frankly and clearly it was not stcw compliant you cannot give a certificate for pscrb or advanced fire fighting or or the air in particular the refresher courses in any case no stcw compliant certificate can be given the approach that was taken was due to the extent that it can be done online and the rest of it to be done later and that is why the validity of those certificates was also limited and for that we had a uh, you can say uh, dictate or an approval or uh, you know interesting approval from imo where there was a circular issued by imo itself in the during the beginning of the pandemic days that flag states or the issuing states to use practical and pragmatic measures to get over this situation in terms of training examination and certification of seafarers and uh, that is why you must have seen people doing something online and then getting a pscrb refresher certificate valid for 18 months because there was nothing more that we could do but at the same time we could not deprive the person of his livelihood or at the same time the employers to post him on the ship and get that uh, keep the trade moving uh, captain dubey would you like to have any other comment on this particular topic then we go back to captain many you have to unmute please unmute please yeah thanks uh, thanks uh, prajita heard your question actually it is uh, as you said it's a repetition this topic uh, was uh, already there earlier somebody had asked a question on this but i must uh, clarify that uh, all the courses uh, approved by dg shipping are on now and uh, everywhere uh, people have come back to the classrooms all the practicals are being done all the new batches of competency courses they have been put into classroom now all the practicals and everything is being held so this information i am just giving you that everything is open now there is no problem about it and uh, i agree with captain yadav that uh, that was the best thing which we could have done uh, which the administration could have done uh, for the period of pandemic and uh, that is how the 18 months uh, was the validity of the certificate Uh, and then when at the at the first opportunity when you could do the practicals as part b then you were give, given five year validity certificate 
so so that is what it is and uh, i must tell you that uh, the, everything is open now all over india in all the states people are doing the practicals all the classes are on in the in the classrooms that's all all right all right uh, uh, can we go back to captain many please we have uh, two more uh, seafaring participants yes thank you captain yadav uh, we will now ask uh, captain sanjeev singh he had raised his uh, hand earlier but now it's your turn you have the stage sir captain sanjeev singh uh, good evening sir good evening everybody <clears throat> i like to uh, base my thing in the three topics uh, where i'll bring up what am i generally the juniors have already spoken about uh, their concerns are so the training aspects they basically covered the delay parts and the extensive uh, time which has been utilized for when they come for holidays then the holiday time is being used for training time and uh, they lose that time and it is a lot of confusion they do corona time but i will base it on the motivation part the people who are joining c right now uh, their motivation level is not that as generally it used to be i have a career where 35 years of my life i have given to c and the quality of people who used to be there and now who are there have drastically changed a lot and uh, uh, somewhere down the line i feel that uh, the training the pre c level uh, when they are ashore where the theory has been taught and uh, then it, they come on board the training which the seniors give to juniors the, there has there is a lot of gap between that thing and uh, in generally what happens is now that the person is not good the seniors say okay sack him send him home so uh, there are a lot of cases where the people have been sent home because of lack of training or lack of motivation so uh, my concern is the training part so uh, during the training during the training am i audible no there was yes yeah, yes please go ahead now yeah okay so my concern is that that junior levels which are coming to see right now uh, they need to be motivated from shore while they are undergoing pre sea training and to have a very open mind when they come on ship so so they are open to learning even the seniors when they are teaching the juniors because generally uh, seamanship and all is a very practical aspect nowadays you cannot sit at home and be teach them you know by books it has to be by by way of hands so i feel that uh, pre c levels where the training is imparted it should be done with a motivation factors to be play that uh, they are open to learning and uh, it should not be that they have come on board and uh, unko paisa mil jayega and then they'll go home you know because there are many juniors who come on board they say you know they've come for fun and they've come for a good time you know? it, it's a very it's a very uh, Uh, effective job yahan pe it's a, at that particular moment the action is to be required so uh, the training aspect that is there and uh, secondly really, uh, i'll put on the problems that i face on ships during this corona times and uh, during uh, this thing i think the juniors already completed that no no sign of fatigue mental health and the time that they put in joining a ship you know they they put in quarantine for days and weeks together and that they are in transit and they are not compensated they are not rewarded for that time lost and the, the excuse is that ki okay these are corona times you know th- those thing aspect those things have to be uh, addressed so uh, when i had done ship for 8 months as a master on a vlcc so that's also a lot of time you know it's a very uh, stressful time and uh, very fatigue is there and uh, uh, parents are calling children are calling wives calling and then then you are expecting that to be performing at the fullest level so i really don't know that corona times we how we manage through thing now they are very we are waiting of that time so uh, uh, i feel that uh, uh, the times have changed and uh, we are coming over it so uh, uh, it's a thankless job basically we we do months in and months out and uh, uh, it should be more uh, Uh, understanding where the person is not as per the demand and fancies of the company where they want to do things and uh, how they want to do it it should be streamlined that is what my main aim is so that is what my main concern is thirdly i'll ask about the uh, survey part uh, since the classification society person is there so i have done a lot of uh, surveys and uh, vettings have been con- uh, conducted uh, during corona times the vettings have been done over videos 
where the wedding should have been in 8 hours or 10 hours of affair but due to videos and uh, online weddings the things have processed to 3 days 4 days and uh, then uploading those videos in the websites and uh, those things have and a lack of internet speed that has also played a lot of role and uh, causes a lot of stress on board so i think that part should be addressed how to control the wetting part and uh, the this this part uh, the wetting part and the classification society should be addressed during corona time because i i understand that even the corona will finish the covid protocols will finish ashore but it will still continue to some time uh, maybe another one year two year till the it really phases out from the earth you know so i feel uh, this should this part should be addressed the wetting part and the uh, uh, the survey parts that should be the one and uh, lastly i will uh, call up uh, uh, nusi sir um, abdul Ga- abdul ghani sir if you can do something about seafarers if you can put uh, the nri clause should be removed you know for the seafarers if the person is a uh, have a seaman's book the nra clause should be removed this is all what i can say thank you very much thank you uh, captain singh uh, that is very informative and i'm sure captain yadav has taken note and uh, mr abdul ghani sarang uh, will address your concern uh, may i now invite our last speaker of the day uh, sailing chief engineer mr vivek sangal to please come on and take the stage mr vivek sangal Please unmute and yeah. present your views. Yeah. So, am I audible to all? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Good Please evening, all, uh, honourable chief guests, uh, respected panelists, uh, moderators, fellow colleagues, and other distinguished guests. A very good evening to all of you. Uh, my points will be related to the training aspect. Uh, very well said uh, by many of uh, my fellow colleagues uh, regarding. the problems they have faced on ships uh, similar to what uh, uh, just mentioned by captain saab uh, it is regarding the trainees which are joining these days sometimes so what i have found is that uh, when a trainee comes uh, within a month time he comes to you and he is like that ki i am confused whether to continue with the sea career or not okay so this kind of thing is very depressing actually that means uh, a person who comes on ship and then he decide whether to pursue or to or, or uh, to stop it okay we have limited people on board and then if such a kind of people come okay it becomes difficult to manage things okay so what i mean to say here is that uh, some institutes they give such a lucrative uh, image to merchant navy that uh, okay everything you got a handsome salary and maybe your uh, overseas travel and all this so it is better to give the right image to the candidates okay so once they join on board they should be ready for some kind of hardship especially when you end up joining a old ship okay a lot of work being done okay and it is not easy okay especially at a trainee level so this is my first thing second thing is uh, i want to talk about the quality of teaching okay especially with regard to the stcw courses like uh, there are certain modular courses revalidation upgradation okay there are many institutes okay which are not doing a good teaching in these fields okay the or some time back it has become like you pay the fees and you get the certificate nothing is being taught in the classroom okay so this thing is what needs to be addressed upon dg shipping has done something okay by starting this e learning exit exams to make it tougher but actually they are not addressing this issue okay we know that i did my class 1 preparatory classes from <coughs> lbs college i think most of you must have done and now at this moment presently there are no batches of class 1 in there just because of the reason that nobody is willing to teach <coughs> okay so the third point is a little contradictory uh, as far as the online coaching is concerned most of you have said that the online coaching is not good okay and uh, there is no eye to eye interaction and uh, we don't get that practical train agree okay for pre c post c courses it doesn't fit well okay but 
still i believe that online coaching as far as the value added courses are concerned which are done by the companies for the seafarers it is good enough to do it online no need to travel what is the point traveling a person traveling from delhi to mumbai to attend a maritime course on value added courses it doesn't make any sense okay now the whole world is talking about the greenhouse gas emission reduction so let's contribute to that don't travel don't burn fuel okay stay at home and attend the course there is no big deal about it and the last thing is about the placement okay the placement is becoming a problem i got number of calls uh, from our juniors from other colleges okay to get the placement the reason may be that big management companies have opened their own institutes they are hiring their own cadets okay but other premium institutes which were the top at some time they are suffering now okay so something needs to be done about it so that's all uh, from my side thank you <clears> hey <throat> thank you mr sankal uh, captain yadav all yours yeah <clears throat> thanks a lot <clears throat> i think uh, the first uh, question that i will take is tailor made for uh, captain subrato khan from the training ship chanakya <clears throat> a comment made by captain sanjeev singh who himself also happens to be as he had said, said right in the beginning is from 8891 uh, training ship rajendra batch and his uh, complaint was uh, the new entrants being trained they are not motivated enough they are not trained enough and they are um, you know of a far too inferior quality compared to the earlier generations being on the chair of uh, training ship uh, uh, chanakya what comments could you have uh, thank you sir a uh, very valid question that today's generation uh, uh, placement is a issue for both the premium institutions and there are also a uh, uh, view that training is not imparted to that level and of course uh, the people are not motivated very very valid questions i agree with both the uh, uh, both uh, vivek and uh, and uh, uh, captain saab that these questions are very valid so today what seafarers we are getting to a large extent are from tier 2 or if i may say tier 3 cities their exposure to the maritime world is rather less compared to the yester years uh, seafarers who were mostly from the metros or the tier 1 cities where the exposure to merchant navy was far more and he had a full idea about what he will be expected to do but today maybe from tier 3 cities they are just uh, probably not not aware of what the hard work they have to put in when they are on board they think it is maybe just about a white collar job and especially some people who are done bsc nautical sciences they feel slightly more superior than the rest so they feel it's a maybe is a white collar job so it's a lot of responsibility uh, on the training institutes to make them aware that's what we are trying to do and uh, out here in chanakya we insist that they uh, during the induction time they are given a good briefing about what they can expect and during the training period also we try to make sure that they know the reality and give them sufficient practical training and make them do the work like uh, clean ship and other things out here so that they know exactly what they are in for but as far as motivation level is concerned i would say a lot depends on the faculties here again the faculties at times are not motivated enough i would say 50% of the faculties are motivated rest are not that motivated enough uh, for they do the job uh, uh, training job as the run of the mill and the extra bit which is there in the earlier days is still missing so uh, i would say uh, we are working on it in a way to give a, a path to the faculty most of the faculties are kind of stagnated they will remain as faculties but we at imu try to give them some extra work like research on the field of education and others so that they are motivated that they have a path they can go from one 
from a junior pro a professor, associate professor to a professor and lecturer. So they have a growth path which motivates them and that will motivate and that will reflect on their work. And of course, uh, uh, when they go at sea, the trainees, a lot depends on the training, uh, the shipping companies also about their induction so that they can actually make them uh, aware of what is expected from them, I would expect. But we at IMU are trying to do these small things to try and make them aware and be motivated by, with the help of the faculty and getting them know the reality. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Captain Subrato. Uh, I think I'll take on the other question uh, that was put in over here. Uh, <clears throat> On, on the similar topic uh, from Mr. Uh, Vivek Sangal regarding the training at the refresher courses, revalidation courses, or uh, you know that uh, we mentioned something about MEO class one also. So uh, I'll invite Captain Dubey to respond to that. And uh, Captain uh, uh, Shri Vivek Sangal, if you can just repeat your that part of that question just, just to refresh the memory about the refresher courses and revalidation courses, etc. Sir, uh, yeah. Sir, what I mean to say is that uh, in the classroom, they have the course material, they have the handouts, but the teaching level is not there. Okay, maybe the uh, teacher or uh, the faculty will come into the class, he will just pass the time and he will just uh, finish the course. That is what. <clears throat> Yes, Dubey sir, please. It may not yeah. be valid for all the institutes, but some yeah, of yeah. them, of course. Yeah, yeah. No, no problem. We just take it as a general comment, nothing in yeah. Yeah. specific to any one particular institute or things like that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I heard your question. Uh, the two aspects you have raised. One is that uh, the institutes uh, owned by shipping companies versus the others. That was one point you had mentioned. Uh, and the second point uh, is that, uh, you know, the, the teaching is not good uh, in, in uh, institutes. Uh, in spite of having the system of online exit examination and all that, which has been done and uh, implemented by DG Shipping. On the first topic, uh, uh, yes, uh, the shipping companies have got their own institutes now. In the beginning, it was not there when uh, the private uh, parties were uh, invited to open the institutes uh, way back in 95, 96 and all that. Uh, that time it was not there, but now since it is a free, the shipping companies have gone into it and they're doing a good job. There's no doubt about it. Uh, so the other others, okay, they have got disadvantages, no doubt about it, uh, because they don't have any means of uh, placement, number one. Number two, they're not getting candidates also so many because, uh, you know, they, they don't have any company with them who can send the candidates to them. But it is a part and parcel of the life. We have to accept the way it is. It is a free uh, word and everything is, uh, you know, uh, depending on uh, the circulars and all, everybody is free to open the institute. Uh, regarding the other part, uh, you see, we must appreciate that previously, before the pandemic, uh, there was a, you know, a simple course conducted by the institutes. Uh, the faculty used to teach. There was one, uh, you know, assessment done by the institute and certificate was issued by the institute. Uh, there are a lot of malpractices are going on. The teaching at that time was really not there. In some institutes, some institutes, they were doing good that time also, now also. So the DG shipping brought in a new system where the candidate has to go through the e-learning, then they have to pass that, they have to go to the institute, they have to do the course there, then they have to go through EJT examination, and after that, when they passed all that, the certificate has to be generated from the uh, from the DG shipping, which were not there earlier. And that a lot of bad things used to happen during that time. So now everything is uh, 
streamline that way and uh, we find that yes good effort has been made but problem is that people find loopholes even on all these systems and they always try to tend and mend it uh, as per their advantage try to break the things uh, so that is what the problem lies if it is being done uh, honestly uh, as per the circulars uh, people are really teaching and unless they teach there won't be any uh, the, the people won't pass in exit examination all that is uh, you know is related so that some institutes are doing as i told you very correctly very honestly and uh, some ones they were doing earlier also the same way now also they want to take advantage of that the loopholes so this is what i have to say about these two points which were raised thank you also mr uh, sangal i think you mentioned something about mu class 1 course can you repeat that quickly it is that uh, <clears throat> like uh, uh amio class 1 preparatory classes it used to be done in lbs we we all must have done but in today's time it is not there okay what is the reason behind basically what is the reason behind that means uh, the students are not getting what they are supposed to <clears throat> uh the only closest person again i have to call back on is uh, uh captain subrato khan from chanakya because uh, about lps college we don't have any other representative here uh, would you like to comment on that why that lps college is not conducting mu class 1 course so over a period of time i think so it's a known fact lps at one time was doing about 47 courses and today it is just doing i think it was had gone down to about two to three courses and now it's come up to seven eight courses which is very very unfortunate uh probably the competition from the private institutions and uh, where the teaching may be better i agree to that moreover the convenience of staying in delhi or other locations has also added to the fact that most of the candidates in north india would like to do it in fosma in delhi and ari and all that that has added to it at, at one time we had only lps and that is all and yes. so uh, variety of factors but again i would say to a large extent shortage of faculty at lps as of now is one of the also factors but combinedly that we are trying to get start these courses once again in a slow and steady way okay uh now coming to that uh, last point uh, from which i noted down here is regarding the placement from uh, jevinya mr vivek sangal that the placements are uh, poor and that's why the uh, for uh, you know the <clears throat> the seafarers or the new entrants are not motivated even during the uh, while the program of training is going on at the institute because they really don't know whether uh, they will actually get placed or not so any anyone in general would like to comment on that so placement in uh, out here imu is as high as 85% which may not be known it may be just known that placements is not there the last year's placement was around 80 80 85% 80, and uh, see the lot of reasons because we are also catering for no no class. no captain khan this question i am not addressing it to you it was just a Achha, question okay. to everybody yeah okay okay uh, not specific to imu but i would like to uh, answer yeah. that later on yeah. no i got that part uh, anybody else would like to comment anything regarding this uh, the poor placement that the trainees face and because uh, they are uncertain about the placement so the motivation level automatically comes down anybody who captain uh, let's say ganendra singh would like to speak sir <laughs> thank you sir uh, i think anything to do with training it's always close to my heart um uh, i would not consider this to be interlink placement and motivation and that to motivation during training or afterwards on board because uh, if one is more motivated he will be better trained and he'll get placement it's it's just the other way around you can't say that he was not motivated for the training because he was not sure about the placement that i think they should be pretty sure that only if they are motivated and that they undergo a good training because the top 10 20 30 50% of off the carrots in any institute get placed it is the bottom 50 who actually don't pay attention they are the ones who sometimes struggle and uh, sir for that matter uh, because i am very current with uh, the people on board 
during covid obviously it was low but i have started going on board ships again i see that uh, uh, it's the fault of the seniors whether it is during training or it is on board we don't channelize their energy in the right way even from the first question when uh, the second officer said about paperwork see none of the senior officers talked about paperwork i had that question in mind when you say there is lot of paperwork you can mention specifically which which uh, 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 somebody did say that mention specifically which paperwork you think is more now so now with wifi and things available on board their energy is going more towards that direction and it is the seniors who have to channelize their energy and motivation into the ship activities and that will change uh, the entire scenario <laughs> that's it sir okay okay there may be maybe various versions to that uh, about the placement part of it because uh, uh, i am you had conducted a you no know, competition amongst the uh, students of the uh, campuses and uh, they were given to you know prepare some uh, proposal to uh, you know mock mock proposals to imo dealing with on board training and uh, quality of on board training and things like that and uh, <clears throat> the people were there from second year third year fourth year engineering or the nautical science ones and their primary this thing was about the placement part that you know unless placement is there or is uh, you can say guaranteed or assured uh, rest everything is of no good the food is bad the accommodation is bad the linen is bad and everything is bad because the placement is not taking place all complaints arise out of that and since they don't see their fourth year guys getting placed so the people who are in third year and uh, second year they are up in arms only because of that issue and we cannot uh, probably put that under the carpet because if we are calling people okay different people may have different views on this however if we are calling people from hyderabad and bhopal and dehradun and veral to come to save some particular institute let's say tolani institute in pune and at the end of it if they don't get placed in the profession that they have chosen and they have come for uh, there can't be more uh, you know if they find something else is a different issue we are we'll leave aside 10 15% people who may like to do something else but the balance the ones who have come aspiring for this profession uh, there can be nothing more uh, disheartening than uh, not getting a placement on completion of training yeah so there are two things to it yeah when we didn't have the private institutes you would remember very well so you were because in that position even uh, government of india when only rajendra was there they used to increase and decrease the intake correct depending on the requirement yeah so today that is not there so obviously this situation will be there whether the market needs them or not if the training remains steady the number of guys coming out trained remains steady and the requirement fluctuates this will happen okay at the same time Uh, training quality, uh, whatever said and done with CIP and all that, with the institutes being inspected, is the same because we have discussed this in in our fraternity many times that competence and employability are two different things. So uh, that linen and all part uh, <laughs> we would not go into, but the training part definitely uh, it can have some more flavor, some more practical aspect. so that they know what should what is expected and how to do suppose whether it is splicing or to to keep a watch or uh, to plot a position on now on egg disk now if we still go on chart then it is like obsolete yeah uh, do they understand the egg disk so are we upgrading our training and all those things sir all right i have uh, only one small one question remaining here and uh, since ms sonali banerji has uh, left here to go for some other uh, uh, engagement Uh, i'll request uh, dr sanjay bhavnani if you can come on please dr bhavnani are you there meanwhile i'll just uh, like yeah. to add on uh, one right. point which gyanender uh, very sorry sorry i am using your first name directly uh, he put up very interestingly that uh, <clears throat> just think of it i joined in 83 i am just not giving any sort of examples my 82 pass out batch was uh, i think uh, 
not placed. 81 batch, half of them were not placed. And 83, suddenly the seat intake was increased to 140. So I don't know how government of India had the inputs that a huge demand is going to come. Uh, there, is a, there was a huge a long recession for almost seven, eight years. If all guys of our batch or that time remember. But it was really, uh, believe it, that 83 pass out batch, when 87 they passed out, all of them 140 were absorbed. That is number one. So did they really have that too much of intelligence input, what is happening worldwide and how much <laughs> seeds they are going to generate? I beg to differ, but yes, their stroke of luck was working and perhaps uh, they got it right most of the times. And secondly, what you said uh, uh, regarding this private institutes coming in and, you know, the jobs not being available. We had a long discussion and one-to-one -one chat with uh, Captain D.T. Joseph, who was the PG at that time. Right, Mahesha? Yes. And he also uh, was instrumental in, you know, giving uh, okay to a lot of many private colleges which were given uh, this facility of training, the cadets and TMEs. And his argument was very simple, that which college in India or which engineering college in India or which, uh, you know, management college in India, forget about IIT and I am, so I am not comparing them, gives you 100% placement. So I, why do we have to live in this sort of uh, bubble thought that if 100 boys are passing out for doing marine engineering, all 100 boys should get job. Who, who has started this, uh, you know, myth or who has started uh, propagating this idea at all for the first beginning, I would like to, you know, ask this question. Why so? Which college in the India gives you a 100% training capacity, uh, placement, except maybe IIT and IIMs? Over. Okay, okay. All right, I think that, as I said uh, earlier also, there can be very different views on this. Uh, the views from the uh, students who are attending the courses and the institutes concerned will be very, very much different. The ones who are on the receiving side of it or the cadets who passed out from Rajendra in uh, the years uh, 1980, 81, 82, etc. Uh, and, uh, my, you know, uh, after second mates, uh, this thing also, they could not, uh, second mate certificate also, they could not get jobs. Uh, that is not, the, it was not a placement for the trainees, uh, but the placement after second mate certificate or the people who passed out from DMAT after obtaining their, uh, uh, you know, getting that, uh, what they have six months or something in party or something they get. So after, even after obtaining that, the, there were no jobs and the people are just looking around for jobs all over. So the views will be different, depends on, which side you are, are you on the receiving side of it? And the views can be very, very, very strong on that part of it because you are actually on the receiving side with no, uh, uh, no other assistance or nothing else available. As far as I think- Fortunately uh, or unfortunately, perhaps our generation has seen the receiving side and the other side both. As I mentioned in the beginning, 83, when we went to join the college, yeah. all of were told, you know, do you know that 82 batch has not yet been placed DMAT, only one college that time, or perhaps one or two more. Uh, uh, Mr. Simon, our esteemed guest, is also here. <laughs> he will vouch for it. Many people, seniors, asked us, you know, what make you join this college? You know, now nobody has got a placement. Are you mad? Are you going? So, I mean, didn't, didn't you get jobs anywhere else? No other opportunity. You see, just to make, make a comment on what you said about 83 and then the planning. The inputs what they have and by the time that is analyzed and anything is done about it maybe three four years pass and by the time it is impl implemented is another four years because it's a four years course and maybe during that period of uh, four plus four eight years the situation got reversed and you all got placed so that's the best i can explanation i can give it for that part of it that the people were not getting jobs and then by the time in 83 you started off and 87 so the recession part was over and people started getting moving out and as well as people start getting jobs. So it was just probably just the cycle where you just coincided with your uh, passing out 
uh, or it was you can say uh, pure stroke of luck that that particular batch when they passed out in 87 they had everything good laid out for them all right uh, i'm going back to the question which has uh, not been answered yet about the uh, classification society surveys and the uh, being carried out on remote during the pandemic period and the complaint uh, or the comment made by captain sanjeev singh was well normally the uh, you know the survey is carried out in 6 or 8 hours or something here it got extended to up to 3 days or 4 days <laughs> just for uh, updating our uh, uh, you know knowledgeable uh, uh, panelists that i have invited uh, dr sanjeev bhavnani to answer this question captain sanjeev singh can you please repeat this please. this comment what you made captain sanjeev singh Ah, sir. I I initially told though that uh, generally, uh, when we have inspections, uh, any wetting inspection or a class survey just uh, starts in the morning by eight nine o'clock and finish by the day end. To the utmost, it carries up till eight nine o'clock at night. But uh, during uh, the COVID times, uh, the surveys are being conducted remotely by shore, and uh, uh, they want uh, high digital images of videos and pictures. and uh, to upload those things on the their site and their uh, addresses uh, is a lot of issues because the speeds are very less on internet speeds are less plus uh, to do all those things is more laborious and more demanding than actual survey so the actual survey is more preferred than which finishes in a day you, know? you prepare the ship and uh, the inspection or the wetting or the survey finishes the when the person comes but because of this uh, online thing it has stretched to 3 4 days you know sometimes 7 8 days i have heard 7 8 days it has taken and the the whole ship is doing just that you know ju just doing the wetting part so we need a solution on that dr bhavnani please did you hear that yes yes i i heard that question uh, uh, raised by captain singh uh, so first of all captain singh thank you very much for that question i think very very uh, interesting uh, aspect here uh, we are used to wetting inspections which have been carried out totally over a span of few hours and suddenly when it runs into a period of 2 to 3 days which is multiple times over then definitely you know it uh, it does create a um, uh, does create a lot of problem but you know this uh, the entire pandemic has resulted in a you know in a lot of funny things and this is of course one of them everybody in the marine industry has been affected by the pandemic in 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 many many ways huh? so it's not only the it's not only as far as the wetting inspections are concerned even the companies which are carrying out these wetting inspections they are also not really very sure whether this is really the best way of doing it or not but as a part of the risk assessment they are trying to do it in the in the most effective manner uh, because i mean with all the restrictions which have been imposed uh you know um, this this probably is the only solution and uh, um, at the same time you know even even for people who are working in all other sectors of the maritime industry they have also been affected by by the entire pandemic their job and their work has also multiplied many many times and now we we do hope that yes there is going to be some solution very soon uh, we do also hope that uh, things are going to uh, become normal again uh the marine industry has always been very demanding especially when it comes to the various oil majors and especially when it comes to the wetting inspections and uh, we really have no option but to comply with all their requirements we have to ensure that they don't really have uh, any kind of a uh, uh, any kind of a deficiency which may result in the in the vessel not being accepted for business further so we definitely um, have to respond to the way the entire situation is going to develop and i'm sure i mean everybody understands this everybody recognizes this and before long things are going to get better and better and as we have seen over the years also things have been getting more and more streamlined there are going to be newer and newer challenges which are going to be uh, uh, which are uh, which are uh, which we will have to deal with and we will have to find out a solution to them and in a way i mean you know the entire shipping industry is uh, is actually like that the kind of challenges which we which we have to deal with have probably never been experienced every day on board a ship is is like a new day for us uh, howsoever experienced we may be because we don't know what's really going to happen 
And this is quite in line with that mindset which we need to develop. But yes, at the same time, I, I do recognize your concern. I do recognize uh, what, what you are trying to say is not something which is the best of the things. Um, but yes, same time, we do hope that Things are things are going to improve once as the pandemic gets more and more settled down over the next few weeks and in the next few months. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Bhavnani, and thank you so much for coming at short notice. Uh, I think we can take questions from the audience uh, related to any of the uh, questions or the issues thrown up by the participants, the seafaring participants, as well as by the uh, panelists. Yeah, I'll add to I'll add to what uh, Dr. Bhavrani just mentioned sure. that the way the inspections are going mm -hmm. to be conducted is is something we have to accept. The SAR two requires you to first send a whole list of uh, you know photographs beforehand, and there'll be a tablet based assessment uh, when the when the surveyor uh, the wetting inspector comes on board. So this is the way life is going to be headed, uh, and I'm sure technology will keep pace with whatever is expected from the ship. Only thing is that uh, the COVID perhaps caught us off guard. So we didn't have the technology, we didn't have the internet bandwidth, we didn't have so many things. And yet uh, the need for inspection was always there and PAC brought in this thing about remote inspections. Even we in from the office uh, felt that that was the next best thing, uh, which is what we even did with the with the e-courses. I mean, that was the next best thing that you could do an online training instead of, you know, a physical training, something better than nothing. So and, and the learning from this COVID has been that use technology to better use. And I think these remote inspections are going to be something which we just have to sort of live with. Correct. correct. Ab absol absolutely right, Captain Korea. I mean, we, we have to keep on changing ourselves in response to the ever-changing demands which are there. And uh, that's what actually is the hallmark of a good seafarer and a good um, and, a, and a good maritime professional. This is what we've been doing all our lives and this is what is, is going to continue to happen. Thank you for that. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Bhavnani and thank you, uh, Captain uh, Deepak Korea. We have a question. Uh, yes, Captain Vijay Arora, please. Yes, uh, good evening all. Yeah, I uh, heard the conversation but uh, uh, Dr. Bhavnani and uh, uh, Mr. Korea said, it is right uh, that we have to keep changing uh, with the situation. And this uh, COVID situation, uh, uh, everyone has tried their best uh, to develop new ways. And uh, this is going to uh, not get over soon. As per the latest uh, report, uh, survey conducted by US. There's going to be 15 million cases by the end of uh, 2022 in the US. So it's not going to get over. Uh, so we have to, uh, in my opinion, we have to continue on improving this online and uh, remote system, shortening down the time of inspection because it's not going to get over soon. Thank you. Uh, Captain Vijay Arora, can you confirm you are from uh, uh, Indian Register of Shipping, isn't it? No, no, no. I I was on a ship with you, Vishwa Mangal. No, say I that. was a deck cadet that time. No, no, you were with me. Okay, now where are you working now? Uh, now I am uh, doing my own business. I am uh, stationed at Chandigarh. Okay, okay, okay. No, because there is uh, somebody with this name in uh, IRS also. He, he is Mr. Vijay Arora. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right. All right. Uh, yes, any uh, other questions? Uh, Subrat, your hand is still up. No, no. This was uh, basically at that point of time, I just wanted to stress a point. So that uh, same thing, what I said, that 100% uh, placements, for all, you know, so many training institutes is practically impossible. We don't have that many slots. You know how many slots each company is having okay. and how many internal placements are possible. It's it's a, it's a thought uh, which has to be seriously uh, gi given an understanding that 100% placement was not given 
एज ए राइट फॉर टेकिंग एडमिशन इन ए बी टेक मरीन और यू नो बी एस सी मरीन और फॉर दैट मैटर एनी इंस्टीट्यूट ओवर See, there has to be some solution to it. Yeah. Either you reduce the, you either you reduce the intake or you, you know, you increase the output. I, I, I think I have given the hint. I think I have given the hint at the beginning of my yeah. this thing. I said when yeah. I joined in eighty three, there were no jobs for eighty two batch. So this has to come. This, I mean, this this decision has to come by themselves. <laughs> Mr. Subrat, uh, I think you have had your hand up from nineteen eighty three. Yes, Mr. Abdul Ghani, please go ahead. Yeah, just see, this is just in a lighter vein. Since we are talking so much about training, you know, some companies actually do a lot of training for all ranks of seafarers. Some company do little bit, and there are many companies who are interested in you know coaching. You know, a company ne finished product ho gaya to dusra company ne kich liya. You know, there is that is also happening now in this. तो मैं इन लाइटर भी ना वो सीइंग सीइंग ना फुटबॉल में जो है तो ना वो मिलान क्लब वाले को उसने लिया तो उसने बेल आउट किया इतना पैसा दिया वो कंपनी को यू नो और वो दूसरा फुटबॉल क्लब्स का हाउ दे व्हेन दे टेक द पर्सन फ्रॉम दिया क्लब दे दिस दे बाय देम आउट ऐसा कुछ सिस्टम होना चाहिए ना एटलीस्ट कोच टाइमिंग तो बंद होगा दिस इज इन लाइटर वेन थैंक यू ओके All right. Just a general observation on the. Extremely good uh, idea, Ganesh Sir. Extremely good idea. He he has given a very good idea. I endorse that fully. <laughs> okay. Uh, just one uh, point that is emerging out of this whole thing is about the quality of uh, training because today's topic was uh, related to training. I just have one very simple, very small observation to make, and I will uh, uh, request your uh, comments or inputs or uh, whichever way you want to look at it. how is it that uh, those people i mean the seniors where uh, you know it is claimed that the training was good and this was good and everything was good uh, and uh, now the same people after 20 or 30 years uh, uh, this thing uh, people of the same generation are actually heading the institutes or faculty at the institutes it's the well trained ones i'm not talking about the today's ones then why is it that the output from the institute in today's dates to considered to be so hopeless when the training uh, in terms of administration or actual imparting of training is all being done by the so called well trained people who were trained 20 or between 20 to 30 years ago yes ganendra singh sir in our time and till i think 2008 there used to be an ood officer on duty i think uh, whether it is imu or it is the private institutes they have iod they don't have a role model they don't have that curriculum we have clean toilets ourselves in chanakya and then later on on board we were free to do anything today the same curriculum is not there the curriculum has changed and even if people are heading the institute sir they are not uh, they are not framing the curriculum they are following what has been told to them or given to them as this is what is to be followed which is more like a college that is the biggest difference that i can see okay yes uh, captain vijay or uh, please yes what okay. captain ganender said uh, is uh, totally right uh, and also just to add on this uh, uh, that uh, not that the uh, training imparted is not good or the motivation is not given it is the uh, mindset of the people so we need to change their mindset we need to uh, what uh, captain supto khan said that uh, we have uh, they have started that uh, they tell them what they are going to get because people nowadays they are coming with different mindset so we need to uh, change their mindset that this is the reality when you go on ship so if that happens uh, people will know beforehand maybe 10 15% may not go go on ship but once they go on ship uh, they will go with that mindset yes mr abdul ghani you know again mirgo again my you know in a lighter way Yeah, this is this is this will be always been ongoing situation. 
दादाजी बोलते थे मेरे टाइम पे जो मैंने हम लोग ने जो मेहनत की ना मेरे पिताजी के टाइम पे और मेरे पिताजी भी वही बोलते तुम लोग क्या मेहनत करे ना हम लोग के टाइम पे हम लोग ने क्या हुई ना वी हैव गॉन थ्रू दिस और मैं मेरे बच्चों को बोलूंगा अरे तुम लोग क्या हम लोग आई थिंक दिस विल दिस विल गो ऑन यू नो इन एवरी जेनरेशन दिस इज एवरी जेनरेशन विल से दया जेनरेशन डिड द बेस्ट और कड़ी मेहनत किए पसीना निकाले ये किए वो किए आने वाला जेनरेशन कुछ भी नहीं गुड फॉर नथिंग इन शॉर्ट ऑफ दिस अगेन lighter man thank you yeah yeah all right uh, if there are no further comments uh, on this i will request captain uh, sanjay mani to please come back and take charge thank you so much uh, captain yadav and all the panelists you have been fantastic i just have one comment to make and without uh, wanting another comment on that that akbar was 12 years old when he commanded the army i mean just think about what it means imagine a 12 year old today doing anything so uh, uh dr saxena has been uh, very patient and i'm sure he has absorbed uh, all the views and the questions and the discussions uh sir may i now request you to sum up the whole seminar or the webinar and please express your views and your comments that you have and thank you so much for your patience thank you so much please thank you thank you uh, captain many and uh, i hope i am uh, audible with all right yes yeah. okay good good okay uh, yes i have been listening to uh, very interesting discussions and uh, i would uh, try to keep it as brief my comments as brief as possible because uh, and not be repetitive uh anyway at the outset uh, thank you uh, thank you maritime destination and uh, gagan pandey for inviting me to be here uh, lots of points uh, i have listed them on what i really uh, sort of prioritize uh, prioritize them but before i touch the first point i think i'll address the last point and especially what uh, uh, mr abdul ghani said आई मीन दिस इज अ थिंग ऑफ एवरी जनरेशन की पहले अच्छा होता था हमने ये किया और हमने नहीं किया अब ये होता है एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा ओके बट एज फर एज द ट्रेनिंग क्वालिटी एंड एटीट्यूड एंड ऑल दैट आई हैव लॉट्स एंड लॉट्स ऑफ व्यूज ऑन दैट बिकॉज आई हैव सीन इट फॉर ट्वेंटी इयर्स बींग द हेड ऑफ द वन ऑफ द लार्जेस्ट कॉलेज एंड आई हैव सीन वन मेजर चेंज विच Uh, nobody appreciates and that is the degradation of social values of our youngsters okay i mean i have seen it in last 20 years it is coming down okay and it is not only in our sector uh, i have friends there in nda who who tell say the same thing that today the crop which is coming in nda is like this you know so i mean we must appreciate that uh, this is a reality and uh, whatever corrections are needed should be taken uh, accordingly as far as the placement part is concerned uh, yes i mean uh, subrat uh, you know, so gave a very good example of uh, dmt numbers increasing decreasing uh, only thing the action taken should be with lot of care i still remember the three training ships which were closed down uh, bhadra nolakhi etc etc and how our uh, indian manpower lost because of that you know so any action taken should be with little care now, anyway now i'll get back to the, my list uh, the first one of course is the online thing okay uh yes there was no choice and online had to be done because of uh, pandemic and uh, i have been attending many many webinars hardcore webinars related to this and uh, when it started few months down the line everybody said oh this is the best thing which has happened in training okay uh, why nobody thought about this earlier and so on and so forth today the same people are saying uh, telling that this is no good okay uh, about a month back we had a, a webinar where i had presented some statistics uh, where a majority of the students says we do not want online classes we want to come back and some of the reasons have been discussed i don't want to repeat them but what we must you know there must be something to take home from here and that is 
that today we are going to physical classes, but we never know. We may come back to online once again. Okay. So have we learned anything from our experience? Okay. What we should do differently than what we were doing so that at least in our second phase, the online training is more effective and it, the trainees get really what is really required. Okay. So maybe you know, some people need to put their minds on as to what needs to be changed in that. Okay. So that was my uh, first point. Uh, the second was with respect to mental health. Extremely important. When I was sailing, the physical capability was required because there was no hydraulics, no, no automation, nothing. You know, you had to be physically very tough. But today we have to be mentally very tough. Okay. And therefore, mental health is very important. And I'm happy uh, that uh, Mr. Ab Abdul Ghani talked about the wellness. I would say not only that, I think we should address the issue of engagement. Are our crew, are our officers and ratings engaged with the company? Like what we used to have earlier. Okay. That engagement thing is missing today. The issue of happiness is missing there today. I think those are the issues we need to di uh, discuss. And whatever is being done uh, by NUSI on mental health, if it is successful, we must replicate that uh, for the officers also. So that's uh, my take number two. Uh, number three, about the mindset change on the uh, training, especially I'm talking of post okay. uh, This is This is two ways. I mean, I know the trainees feel that, you know, you know I've been, we have been sailing like this. We have got experience. Why should we do any other training? Okay, so it's a question of mindset of this. But the mindset of the the teachers, the trainers, is also equally important. And some of these issues we will discuss. That when when they meet, the teachers also must come out with something which is current, which is relevant, and in which they have really done something. It should not be that you know. My, the same slides are going again and again, again. I don't want to be repeated on that. Uh, that is something which needs to be looked into. Uh, the paperwork part, definitely yes. Uh, and uh, digitalization uh, is was referred also. Uh, I would uh, suggest a, a leaf from what the FAL committee of IMO does. I mean, they are also trying to do the same thing. You know, reduce the paperwork which is uh, uh, between the different countries when the trade happens. And it's not an easy job. If you see any of the uh, reports of the FAL committee, uh, it's always, uh, you know, that uh, there's always a balancing act. So why not uh, the same thing can be uh, done there? So, so that the duplication, you know, uh, the redundancy of the documents, which was referred also, uh, are addressed. Okay. Uh, the timely relief, obviously, extremely uh, critical, extremely important. And uh, I'm happy, uh, again, once again, uh, to Mr. Abdul Ghani, that uh, he has given an information that uh, presently some amendments to code A of MLC is being discussed on this uh, respect. If that comes in, obviously, it will be a great relief for our seafarers who, in spite of all the difficulties today, are doing a great uh, work. Okay. Uh, some issues about demotivation by the seniors. I know that these people have told that when a junior goes there, the, some of the seniors say, Why have you come here? Could you think of anything better? Now, this kind of a thing, to when it goes down to a youngster, it sends a very wrong signal. So, I mean, I think we need to come out of that, that always blame the juniors. We must look at the seniors also. Okay. Uh, I think that's uh, about, I have touched on most of the points which uh, I thought uh, I will speak on. If I have missed anything, 
uh, you can always blame it on my age and my memory. <coughs> uh, once again, <coughs> sorry, once again, uh, great to see uh, so many of you and especially the sailing uh, seafarers, including uh, uh, Philip George. Okay, because numerous seminars, numerous webinars, we still always see the same people, same faces. Okay, the sailing seafarers almost are never involved in these discussions. Of course, when the companies do their own, uh, definitely they do that. But any uh, any other thing which is done by any other associations, usually we do not see the active seafarers. Okay, and they are the ones who should be given the uh, chance to speak out, to went out to their. And I was very happy to see, especially the Sandeep Kanwar, with the with the confidence uh, he put in uh, his uh, views. So once again, uh, compliments to all the seafarers. They are doing a great job in in, uh, in such difficult scenarios. And uh, my compliments and great work, uh, Captain Sanjeev Man Mani, and of course MC Yadav as always, and all the panelists. So once again, thank you for calling me and bear. Uh, very, you know, uh, uh, listening to me. <laughs> Thank you once again. All the best. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. It's I've always known to you, known of you as a great analyst, and now I have seen it also. It's a great summation, and I think Gagan Pandey is furiously writing it down because it is his job now to uh, propagate what you have said to various forums, so that. Not only does this uh, webinar has some meaning, but it also conveys a message that all webinars are not meant for just one and a half hours. They have to, we have to learn from this. And uh, I'm sure Gagan uh, will propagate all our messages and discussions in point form to various companies and associations. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, there is one thing that uh, just reminded me that there was one question put up by Captain Singh about some NRE business, and that was not addressed. I think that uh, was uh, to uh, Mr. Abdul Ghani Sarang. Sir, so before I uh, ask Captain Halbe to present the vote of thanks, uh, Mr. Sarang, do you have any comment on that, on what uh, Captain Singh wanted uh, something done regarding this NRE thing? Mr. Sarang? I think he's left. Okay. So anyway, so that's one thing that Gagan, you can uh, uh, when you can get his response on that and add it to your uh, paper. Uh, Captain Halbe, sir, can we have you present the vote of thanks? Uh, sure. Um, when I looked at the timetable, it said that the event is supposed to finish at 1825. The fact that, that we are still one hour later still here shows the engagement of the panelists, the speakers, and all the participants. I'm not saying that every seminar should overrun by one hour. That's not a good thing. But I, I must admit that the, the seafarers put up very engaging comments and engaging issues, and the panelists were also equally candid about their views. So nobody did actually what we call beating around the bush. I think that's a very fair thing and a good thing to do. Uh, importantly, I would like to compliment Gagan for organizing this event and every event which he organizes, he puts the seafarers first. Thank you so much. And as Dr. Saxena rightly pointed out, we, we have the same usual suspects, otherwise speaking at, at any of these uh, major events. And no offense to them, but fresh ideas, fresh queries, fresh thoughts are most welcome. Uh, the uh, thank you, Dr. Saxena, for your candid views and uh, summing up. And uh, Captain Yadav, as always, is is a how should I put? Is a caretaker of knowledge, and he just knows uh, what is there. So, so thank you very much. And uh, all the panelists and all the participants who asked the right questions, gave the right inputs, and Subrat for starting from 1983 onwards. Thank you so much. Uh, on a lighter note. Uh, so one the thing that, you know, all of these, when we hear, uh, I would like to very humbly point out to the seafarers that just as the seafarers had a very rough time during the pandemic, 
and it is reduced somewhat, but it still continues. Let me assure you that in your respective companies, the shore staff put in as much hard work. Believe me when I tell you that. They have burned the midnight oil to see that you go on board and you come back safely. Uh, you will have to trust me on that. I, I really have no words to compliment the shore staff as well. Uh, during the excavation, which went on, you will be aware that Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa are the ancient civilizations northwest of India. And during the excavations in Mohenjo-Daro, they found a tablet. There used to be clay tablets on which inscriptions were made. And there were three things they found on one of the tablets. The first inscription was that the water collection of the city council has been inadequate this year. So wonder how the next year is going to be, number one. Second one was that the garbage collection quality of the city council is not adequate. Wonder how the diseases are going to spread now. And the third one was that the younger generation is so carefree. Wonder how we will see the future. Well, we are 3,000 years later, we are battling the same problems. The thing different. <laughs> that's, that's one. So I will sum up with the, uh, end up with only one small thing. Enjoy today because 20 years from today, these will be the good old days. Thank you very much. Good night and God bless. Thank you, sirs. Thank you, everyone. And uh, with that note, we will all meet again for the next edition, whenever that is. And uh, have a good uh, day, evening, weekend coming up. And thank you, Gagan, for doing all this and all the best. Thank you. 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 Thank